What comes to your mind when you hear the word millennial? Well, I am one. I hope it's something good. But I'm going to talk about some things that millennials get wrong. Even me. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to the Brandon Boyd Show. I am Brandon Boyd. Again, points for creativity for coming up with the name of the show. You can thank me later. As always, don't forget to be awesome and subscribe to the channel, like the video, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell notifications, make sure you stay tuned for all videos related to this show, and we really appreciate you watching so far. Now, when you think about a millennial, what is a millennial? Well, according to the Pew Research Group, a millennial is someone that is born between 1981 and 1996. That's me. I'm a millennial. So Brandon, why would you make a video about things that millennials do wrong? Do you want to talk badly about yourself? You talking to me? Well, no, I don't want to talk badly about myself, but I think millennials get a bad rap in some cases, but sometimes it is deserved. And I fall into a couple of these categories, maybe. I'm not going to tell you everything. But there's a lot of millennials that do. So in this video, we're going to talk about things millennials get wrong, and we are going to dive right into it. So let's get going. The first thing that millennials get wrong, they eat out way too much. Lay off me, I'm starving. All right, it's easy. It's convenience food. It's grab and go. It's, I don't have time. I don't have time to cook or go to the grocery store. I need to get my food now, go home and eat it. And we are eating our money. Yes, I said we. I'm a millennial. I am guilty of this sometimes. I actually buy t-shirts at the places that I eat, right? This is a shirt from Java Burrito. I like burritos so much that I bought a shirt about burritos. Okay, so I'm not all high and mighty here. I am fighting the fight with you. I feel your pain. I love grab and go food, convenience food. I love to wear the shirts made by the convenience food people. So I get it. I'm totally on your side. I understand where you're coming from. According to a recent study from Bankrate, 29% of millennials buy a premium coffee drink every week, 51% go out to a bar every week, and 54% go out to restaurants at least three times per week. You talk about eating your money, that will eat it up very quickly. Now, I like to eat out a lot, but I don't do it quite that much. Millennials are wasting a ton of money in this category, and there's no way to recoup it. Once it goes in your mouth, you can't get that back. The money's gone. And just as a matter of comparison with other generations, other Americans that are not millennials, 59% say that they do not buy premium coffee drinks, 73% say they don't go to a bar as a matter of habit, and 40% say they only go out to eat one time per week. Totally different than millennials. I know it's easy to grab the food fast or have it delivered quickly, but man, there's no way to recoup that money. We're literally putting our money in our mouths and we'll never get it back. The second thing that millennials get wrong is they are very entitled. They want the corner office suite and they want CEO level pay with entry level positions and they don't want to wait to get that money. That's just not the way it works. You have to work your way up from the bottom when you get out of school. Don't expect to get the big office with all the big windows in the corner your first job out of school. It doesn't happen that way. Let me give you an example of this in play. So TD Ameritrade recently did a survey of millennial men and they asked them, how much money do you need to make to be happy? Do you know what the number was? For them to be happy, they needed to earn $118,000 to be happy. There, now you're happy. Now that's twice the average household income in America. So again, millennials expect to have all this pay to be happy, but when they get out of school and they realize, well, I'm only going to make 50, 60, maybe 70,000, well, I guess they're sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're gonna have to learn to deal with it. You gotta start from the ground up, build yourself up, and go that way. It is very rare that you're gonna come out of school and make $150,000, unless you're in a professional school or you've got some sort of advanced degree in a specialized field. Just don't expect it. Learn to be happy with what you have, work your way up, show your managers or your bosses that you're willing to put in the extra effort, and it's obvious by looking at this survey that there's a lot of millennials that don't wanna put the work in, so you can beat them, beat your counterparts, and move ahead while they sit around and wait for their entitled money. The third thing that millennials get wrong is they are so self-centered. Of course, I'm not. 
They're self-centered, they put off owning a home for too long, they put off retirement for too long, and they're starting to live in their parents' house for way too long. It's all about them, right? They don't think about all of the other things that are going on around them. It's all about what's good for me right now. Let me give you a quick example of this. According to CBS News, in 2001, about 11% of people aged 21 through 37 lived at home. Now, 20 years later, that number has doubled to over 22% of millennials live at home. Now, I don't live at home, but the percentage of millennials living at home is unbelievable. Is this your place? No, 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 no. No, I live with my mom. Think about that. It's doubled in 20 years. And what is the reason for that? Now, a lot of people are going to make excuses and say, well, Brandon, you don't understand the economic you know, setup right now. It's not built for millennials. Oh, that's a bunch of malarkey. Malarkey. If that's a bunch of malarkey. Everybody is responsible for their own individual situation, whether you're a millennial, a baby boomer, a Gen Xer, or a Gen Zer, or whatever they're called. I'm not 100% sure. But look at your current situation, figure out what you need to make it better, and go do that. I don't know, man. That sounds like a lot of work. Also, that story, according to CBS, showed that millennials are defining success, about 75% of millennials, in fact, are defining success as being financially independent from their parents. What a low bar. How did we set the bar that low? This goes beyond building their own wealth and saving for retirement. That's not even the main goal now. It's becoming independent from their parents. We have taken a major left turn somewhere. I don't know how we ended up here, but if that is your main goal... Come on, subscribe to this channel. I'm going to teach you how to not do that. If you're a millennial like me and you don't want to end up in that spot, follow this channel. I'm going to get you out of that hole if you're in it. If you're in a rut and you don't think you can do it, that's crazy. Everybody can do this. Follow our channel. And there's a ton of ways to get out of that. Set the bar higher for yourself. Expect more from yourself. And have some dignity to get out of your parents' basement. Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? Save up your money and go make your own rent. Go make your own financial independence and your next goal should be to build your own wealth independent from your parents. The fourth thing that millennials get wrong is they are way too comfortable and way too okay with mountains, and I mean mountains, of student loan debt. As of quarter two in 2019, millennials aged 25 through 34 who make up a large percentage of the millennial population had almost 500 billion dollars worth of student loan debt okay break that down over the course of how many millennials there are that went to school that's about thirty three thousand dollars worth of debt for each millennial and within that group that thirty three thousand includes people that have already paid down their balance to the thirty three thousand so think about that how can you get ahead if you have an anchor tied to yourself trying to move forward this may be one of the reasons why people do live in their parents house for so long because they are under this mountain of debt and they don't know how to get out don't ever get comfortable with going to the student loan office. Use it as a last resort. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? But don't use it as a lifestyle choice to get your avocado toast or your Starbucks coffee mocha grande latte java. Student loans are decisions that you make. You have to put a value on your degree. Is your degree worth going into a mountain of student loan debt? If you're going to go into student loan debt for a degree that pays $30,000 when you get out of school, is that smart? I don't think so. Think about what you're doing. That choice is yours and yours alone. Use the brain that God gave you. Rub the brain cells together that are up there somewhere making decisions and say, hmm, is this a smart idea? I don't know. That's up to you. You make that choice. Don't end up in your parents' basement because of student loan debt. Hold on one second. I got to get to this next one. Uh, the next thing that millennials get wrong is they are addicted or all consumed with technology. Wait, I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to send that last message out as a tweet. I'm going to send it on Facebook. Get a selfie for Instagram. And yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. A lot of them spend their time between two screens. And I just showed you what that looks like. If that looks like you, that could be scary. A recent survey showed that close to 36% of millennials say they are online constantly. Constantly. Stop it. Right? So if they're sitting at the dinner table, they got their family around for Thanksgiving. If this looks like your Thanksgiving table, you're doing it wrong. 
put the phone down, close your iPad, stop trying to post about everything you're serving at Thanksgiving, and just hang out with your family and friends. If this year has shown us anything else, there's a lot that's going on in the world, but this may be the last Thanksgiving you have with some family members. Soak it all up and in. Don't sit there and play Candy Crush on your phone while your grandmother, who's 85 years old, is sitting next to you. Who knows how many more Thanksgiving she's going to have? Why you got to say that? I mean, not to be morbid, but that's true. Don't sit there and stare at your screen. Stop it! It looks absolutely ridiculous. Have you ever went out to a restaurant and you've seen millennial couples, or really any couples, they're all out for their family going out together meal. The kids are sitting over there. Mm. What would you like to drink, sir? A Sprite. I'll take a burger. Well, thanks for taking us out to dinner, Mom. And that's it. That's the family night out. Worst family night out ever. Stop it. So, I should just stop it. There you go. Put your phones down. Look at the world around you, spend time with your family, and value the interpersonal time instead of communicating just on Facebook or Twitter or Twitch, Instagram, whatever the heck else is out there. There's like 50 of them, okay? Get your head out of the phone and pay attention to your family and friends. And the last thing that millennials get wrong, and I'll be honest, I really don't have any data on this, but it's the participation trophy, all right? It's the cliche. When people think millennials, they think participation trophies. People want some kind of certificate or reward just for showing up and doing something they're supposed to do. What you want, a cookie? You don't get something just for showing up. You have to put your butt to work. You have to earn your way, earn every dollar, get yourself out of your parents' basement, save up, create your own wealth, and don't be another millennial statistic that somebody can make a character caricature out of and make you part of that. Be better than that. Set a higher bar and do better pretty harsh. That includes me. I always have to look in the mirror and say, I've got to do better. I always want to do better. But in this case, if you're finding yourself watching this video, if you've been on YouTube all night long and it's two o'clock in the morning, this is the 20th YouTube video you've watched and you're like, well, I don't know. I think I'll just watch some more. Well, I want you to watch my channel, but eventually get up off the couch, go do something, make a living and earn it. Don't be another millennial statistic. So that's this episode. I hope I wasn't too harsh on everybody. Keep in mind, I am a millennial at heart as well. I have to fight some of these urges myself. So I'm not all high and mighty here. I'm telling you exactly what's going on, and this is what people think about when they think about millennials. Let's turn the tide and make millennials the best generation to come along. There's still plenty of time. We're young. We like to have fun. We're smart. We come up with creative ideas. And I will be making a video talking about the things that millennials get right. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you get that alert. Don't forget to be awesome. Subscribe to the channel. And we are going to keep on rolling. Going to keep on pushing out great content for you. And I look forward to seeing you on the next Brandon Boyd Show. We will see you soon.